Hello and welcome to the tenth video in this tutorial series on programming in C. So I've got a standard program here again with a couple of modifications. I've got an extra include here, so we're including the stdlib.h library, standard library functions. And inside the main function, I've got an array of six integers. I've got a variable called index number. I've got a variable called num entered, and I have a variable called total entered. And I also have an array of 16 characters, so car type, for user input. And what we're going to do in this video is store the numbers entered by a user into the console, into an array, and then print them to the screen. So the way we do this is very simple. We make a for loop and we say index number equals naught and you remember that arrays from the last video are indexed by naught so if we have six integers available we'll have integers at the positions naught, one, two, three, four and five so our index number should go from naught and should keep going until it is less than or equal to five or less than six and we'll increment it by one each loop. All well and good. Next thing we want to do is tell the user to enter a number and we'll use our fgets which we know to get our, our, our input from the standard input. Very good. What we'll do then is we'll use a function from the standard library here, the stdlib.h. We shall store what the user has entered in our numEntered variable. And the way we do this is using a function called a2i, open brackets, and the input. And this now, this function here that's in the standard library converts whatever the user has entered into an integer and stores it here. If the user doesn't enter an integer, so a combination of letters and numbers or any characters, it'll simply return zero. If the user enters, enters a decimal number, it'll simply return the number without the numbers after the decimal point, as when casting a float into an integer as we saw in the floating point video. So you'll either get zero if something nonsensical is entered by the user, and if they enter an integer, then you'll get this integer number stored inside num entered here. Then what we'll do just to check things we'll print u entered and d and a new line format specifier there and then we'll simply print num entered. Now I haven't done anything in the array yet but I'm going to save this and compile it and just check that it it runs. So store some numbers Good. So there I've stored 13, 34, 65, well not stored yet, I've entered 13, 34, 65, 34, 76 and 12 and it stored all of my numbers for me. I'll just clean this up slightly with the, because the, the breaks are in the, the wrong place. Okay, good. So you can see that's how that's happening. We're now entering six numbers, they're being converted by A to I and stored as num entered and then num entered is printed to the screen. And now what I want to do is simply put the numbers that we've been entered into our integer array. And the way I do this is simple. You remember that the array is indexed by position number starting at zero. So zero to five. So I simply say int array at the position of index num which is going from 0 up to 5 equals num entered and then what I can do now below here is then write another loop which then prints the array so I'll just take out all this code here and I'll take the int array like so 
So all this is doing here now is an X loop starting again at zero, going up to five, so less than six, incrementing by one, and each time we'll say the interray at the position index num equals a format specifier here for an integer, what is actually stored there. It'll make more sense when it's printed to the screen. So we're going to enter six numbers into the array and then loop through the array and print all the numbers that are then stored there. So if I compile the program and run it again, scroll down a bit, now let's enter some numbers, 75, 24, 7, let's type dog and you can see it now says we entered naught. And let's type 34.765 and you can see it says we enter the number 34 and now we'll enter 9 and now you can see we're printing the numbers that we stored inside our array and at position 0 we have 75, 24, 97, 0, 34 and 9 inside our array. So that's how we get user input then to store the numbers in our array and then use a loop to loop through our array and to print the numbers. Now something else we could do, this is why I have this total entered here at zero. Once we've entered a number, let's increment total entered and let's put a printf here saying with a couple of new lines entry complete total entered D and let's copy this down here and put another new line on the end of there and save this and this will now say the entry is complete and how many numbers we've entered in this previous case here it was six numbers but now let's say we'll allow the user to break out early so we'll say if strncmp which you know from the previous tutorial so if the first character of what the user entered is a Q, a small Q, then we'll say that we are exiting our loop or break and we're not entering any more numbers. So if I now compile this and run it, and I'll enter 43, 67, 76, and then a Q, it now breaks. And now interestingly here, I've got 43 at position 0, the first number, 76 at position 1, the second number, but of course I'm still saying here that I want to print up to, up to index 5. And this is what I was looking at in the last tutorial where you can get easily get some bugs with arrays because I only entered two numbers even though we have space for six numbers I only entered two and those are the two here 43 and 76 but I've asked the program in this loop to use and access the numbers at the indexes where I haven't stored anything yet and it has and it's produced much larger and different numbers or numbers that I obviously haven't entered and if this was a program I was using this would be a, a fairly bad bug because I'm using values in the array haven't yet been written by the program and therefore will cause problems in my calculations. So what I need to do here actually, you can see that total entered integer value is 2 because we entered two numbers. So we want to loop up to this value total entered. So we want to say from index number equals naught and keep looping whilst index number is less than total entered because everything is zero in the index based off zero total entered is two so we want the positions at zero and one the first two numbers so if I now save that and rerun the program and enter 43 and 76 and now type Q to quit you can see here it simply loops through the first two numbers in the array and uses those okay so I hope that's made sort of the uses and looping through arrays a little bit clearer We've used some input in this program from the user to either quit or carry on no entering numbers until we're finished. And I've also shown, again, more by fluke than design, the problem you can get when you start accessing beyond what you've used in your array. 
you must never assume that the default values when you declare an array in this manner are set to zero, because they're not. They'll be set to something completely random. Okay, that's it for this video. Any questions, criticisms, comments are welcome on YouTube. In the next video, we'll have another look at arrays. This time, we'll be looking at array a bit, little bit more at arrays of characters, such as what we have here for our input. Till then, thanks a lot.